It's a Tuesday. It's the 13th day of August, 2024. This day with a podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Beautiful landscapes, historic sites, and unique downtowns await visitors to Douglas and Glen Rock, Wyoming. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Deep moisture is going to be overhead again today. So we're going to see more like what you see there in the image of more thunderstorm build up by late afternoon and evening. Although when you have deep monsoon moisture, you can have showers and thunderstorms happen at night, in the morning, but most prominent in the afternoon and evenings. As we'll see here in a minute, the deep monsoonal moisture producing quite a bit of rain in some locations yesterday. Boy, there was a lot of activity yesterday afternoon and evening, whether it was heavy rain. We had several tornado warnings, especially out in Colorado's Eastern Plains. And today is a similar situation. It won't be exactly the same as yesterday, but it will be very similar. We have deep monsoonal moisture in place. We basically have the same setup. So daytime heating will get those showers and thunderstorms again. On Wednesday, they'll still be around, but there'll be a little bit more of an eastward shift. Drier air comes in. This is what happens when we have these monsoon cycles. You have deep moisture, then a pocket of drier air comes in followed by another pocket of moisture. So that drier air will mean a reduction, not an elimination, but a reduction in thunderstorm coverage Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then by Sunday, as temperatures start to heat up under building high pressure, the next monsoon moisture plume comes in late in the weekend and into early next week. So odds are over the next seven days, many areas of the Western High Plains and Rockies have more rain chances coming our way. Also, we'll have a La Nina update for you at the end of the podcast. Those clouds, you could just kind of look at those clouds and just see the moisture in the air. Very, very deep moisture. As evidenced in this photo here, a lot of building clouds, deep monsoonal moisture all the way up to the high reaches of the atmosphere. So you get beautiful anvils, uh, just a sight to see. But if you were underneath one of those, boy, you got a lot of rain. I'm going to show you a couple of... Uh, rainfall uh, diagrams here from the radar estimate. So this is the radar estimating the rainfall in two locations. We had talked about the possibility of heavy rain in some areas in southern Wyoming, northeastern Utah. So this is out of the Denver radar. Um, and where you see the darker blue into the green, you're an inch, inch and a half of rainfall inch and a half of rainfall or more in the Cheyenne area, which really needed it. You can see the very heavy rainfall here in north central areas of Weld County, down into Morgan County, Colorado, along the I-80 corridor here in southeastern Wyoming. Some of the heaviest rain that has fallen all season. In fact, Cheyenne got more rain yesterday than during the whole month of May. So uh, nice to see that moisture. And back into the Wasatch front of Utah, Kind of hard to see here, but there's the Great Salt Lake. Southwestern Wyoming in Uinta, Sweetwater County, got some heavy rainfall as well. Heavy rain across the I-15 and I-80 corridors of the Wasatch Front. Today, the pattern is going to be similar. Also, a couple more uh, photos have come in from the Aurora Borealis. We still had a geomagnetic storm into last night, but it looked like it was strongest yesterday evening. But from the night before from Hartville, and then we do have a bit of a time lapse of what happened overnight Sunday into Monday from Jan Curtis there in the north side of Cheyenne. And you can see that uh, it was a pretty good show. It certainly did not go to the standards that we saw in that great display of Aurora Borealis that we had in May, but not bad nonetheless. And as we mentioned yesterday, we're going to have some more opportunities for the Aurora Borealis late summer and into the fall season. It looks likely as we reach getting close to our solar max and more sunspots and more coronal mass ejections are coming our way. We have a thunderstorm complex bringing significant widespread rain to portions of Kansas this morning. This will eventually head southeast and dissipate, but will likely get into northeast Oklahoma. And you can see the fetch of subtropical moisture is still there. And here it is on the water vapor. Here's that next little push of drier air that's going to come in late Wednesday and Thursday. But in the meantime, this pipeline of moisture, if you look at the source region of the air, you wonder why if you were underneath those heavier thunderstorms yesterday, well, it almost seemed tropical. Well, it kind of is. Subtropical moisture feeding 
those showers and storms. That's why in these monsoonal moisture plumes, you can get very heavy rain. So today, similar situation to yesterday with the position of the high and a really good, good location to pump that moisture in. As we look ahead, this is the monsoonal moisture flow with the precipitable water through 6 p.m. this evening. Like we showed you yesterday, these dark brutal areas here, the dark green areas is where you're gonna get thunderstorms that generate a lot of heavy rain. The numbers you see is the percentage of average. So when you're talking 150, 100%, 176, as you see right here, 177, you're going to have gully washer type showers and thunderstorms into the dark green as well, but especially those blue areas. So like we said yesterday, this particular area will be susceptible to heavy rain producing showers and thunderstorms and possible flash flooding, especially in areas that got the heavy rain yesterday. If you get heavy rain again, well, the ground soaking up a lot of that moisture is gonna to lead to some flash flood potential today. By tomorrow, notice the deepest of the monsoonal moisture is now into the northern plains. Here's the encroachment of the drier air, but white is still adequate to get showers and thunderstorms going lighter green as well. But this drier air is gonna work its way in Thursday, Friday, and into Saturday. There's the thunderstorm coverage today. The Storm Prediction Center has a lot of dark green from Montana through Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, then into the Western High Plains. So you're gonna be in another environment where we could have some strong to severe thunderstorms, especially in those dark green areas. Yesterday, we had very heavy rain. We didn't have any really big hail, but we did have hail, and we did have several tornado warnings. And in those same locations, we could have that again today. There's that eastward shift of the heavier thunderstorms tomorrow, but the dark green still reaches back to the I-25 corridor and front range again on Wednesday. That drier air Thursday then punches on in, and there you can see it by Thursday. The thunderstorm activity in the desert southwest takes a hiatus and then we're hiatus, and then we're gonna be looking at less in the way of thunderstorm coverage and temperatures getting warmer. Look at that drier air coming in on Saturday. That's why high pressure builds, grows, and expands. But the next batch of moisture right here by Sunday is gonna to wanna to rotate around this high by early next week. Temperatures warm up. So we do get back into some heat. This is by noon Sunday. So temperatures by the weekend kind of get back to the August heat that we saw at the beginning of the month. Maybe not that hot, but certainly warmer than the moderate temperatures that we have now. A quick La Nina update for you. This is the current sea surface temperature anomaly. You can see the, the weak La Nina that we have here right now. And uh, we're, we're just not looking at the La Nina as strong right now as it looked, let's say, in, in May. The La Nina is definitely not going to be as strong as it looked. Now, it still has the opportunity over the next couple of months to get stronger. And if you look at the latest prediction that came out last week, the blue bars represent the probability of a La Nina. Now, they have completely really decreased. Uh, we're now at 70% of it peaking between really October and January. Probably the peak is going to be late November into early December, but really not peaking too much more. In terms of strength, nothing like the La Ninas that we had in late 20, 21, 22, and into early 23. It's just not going to be nearly that strong. What I really want you to show you here is that, yes, the La Nina peaks late fall at the start of winter. Notice the gray bars. The gray bar is the neutral. You're not La Nina, you're not El Nino, but look at the probability of neutral by late winter and spring, and we're starting to see red bars of some potential for La Nina by spring. What is likely gonna happen is that in further predictions coming on up, you'll see these gray bar probabilities go up, especially here in February, March, and April, and probably the red bars. I'm not saying we're gonna have an El Nino by spring, but we're certainly not gonna have the La Nina. It will be gone by then, which is good news, especially when it comes to the dryness. You don't wanna be in a La Nina too long for most of the Western United States because a really strong La Nina signal, especially when it goes for months and months and months, is a dry pattern, a dry signal. Have yourself a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.